because you're in the luxury business. Explain your business to us and how you relate to the rest of retail as you see it. Right. So luxury compares to fast fashion in a way that, you know, really the goods are made like in an artisanal quality. So they're amazing fabrics. It's, it's done by qualified seamstresses in Italy who have been trained. Um, and versus fast fashion, which is made, you know, in Bangladesh by, you know, sometimes in, in very um, squalid conditions and in, in, in a big mass production. So I think while fast fashion had a huge run, obviously, um, luxury is really coming back. And I think young women, especially through um, places, platforms like Rent the Runway, where they can, for a fraction of price, experience a luxury dress, uh, much more interested or much more knowledgeable today about quality. And that's why I think luxury is coming back, even yeah. for young. Are you, in the luxury component, are you more resistant to downturns? We're going to put up a chart here, actually, that shows that luxury retailing actually has done better than the S&P. It's done better than a lot of other uh, alternative ways to invest your money. I think so. I think our clients are incredibly loyal. I think once you experience a, a well-made dress, um, or, or, or you know, you, it's hard to go back. So you know, and it's in, you're talking about investment pieces. There's something of a little bit of a parallel universe going on in fashion. That's where on the runway you see very fantasy clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, there's streetwear right now with like Balenciaga, and there's like very, um, very over-decorated like Gucci. But really, what's, what we're really looking for, what women are really looking for, is clothes to go to work. And look great, like you, Thank you know, you. Who, <laughs> who have to look fashionable. You know, they don't want to wear a dowdy suit. You know, so so that's kind of where we used to perform even in downturns because you know that's where women trust us. And then you know, we're doing, for instance, Derek is known for doing the most amazing pant in the industry, which works with you know any kind of top, even from other brands. So that you know, mm -hmm. if don't you think so? If you get a if you find a great pan, would you always go back? I always go back to the same yeah, pan so if I find a great one. In every colour. <laughs> Ratty, come in here because this exactly ties to the business that you're now running and changing the perception, I think, of consumerism and also making sure that you look and you buy a luxury item as an investment opportunity too because it's got life perhaps beyond your own use. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, I think that nowadays um, people are interested in quality and, um, you know, millennials are saying over and over again, it's 75 percent now are saying that they'll spend more for quality items and for items that, you know, are made or serviced products that are w good for the environment. So you take that into consideration and then you t also take a place like The Real Real where you can make up to 50, 60 percent of it back in on average and you really are looking at it as an investment now. You know, one of the fascinating statistics that, that you brought out in some of your comments was that 80% of the consigners that use their commission go back to the primary market to buy other items in luxury. So do you see yourself as kind of adding to the, the primary market out there? Yeah, exactly. We see it as um, extending the life cycle of luxury goods. And what, what is happening right now, um, people actually think it could be an or, right? Are you spending money with the real, real or with luxury um, in the primary market? But it's, it's both things. So what happens is they take that money that they earn with us and they're buying things that are uh, more relevant for that season. So uh, it's a win-win for both the primary market and the resale market. So Jan Hendrik, is this basically symbiotic with what you do? I mean, you were talking about making high quality, high, co well, uh, high quality fabrics, well tailored and things like that, and then they could have a second life and those people could come back and buy more of your things. Yes, we see that a lot. But we also see dresses which last forever when they're high quality. I always get this comment from women I met say like, I found this really great dress from you four years ago and I'm still wearing it. I get so many comments and I was like, you should go back and buy another one. <laughs> yeah, please don't keep it's it like, too long. Yes. But for instance, Rent the Runway, which is another great platform for millennials because it really like lets them experience these things. Like they always say that our dresses like they don't die because they dry clean it up after after every after every you know rental and then but they still you know look really good. What about working with other brands like Target for example or Coles in terms of redistributing the items that you do or targeting a lower price point. Do you see this perhaps and the real real and actually recycling some of the products as a, a better way to perhaps get access to a younger generation and kind of fostering their interest in your brand? What do you think the best route is here? Yeah, I think 
that's kind of similar to fast fashion, and I think that's a little bit. Um, I think the millennials they don't look so much anymore to overconsume. I think they look more for quality and for yes. for having a closet which is as edited and not like you know huge amounts of clothes for every day. Brand matters. Yeah. So, Roddy, explain your business a little bit more to us. So let's assume we have a really high quality Derek Lam dress. Okay, somebody wears it for some period of time. Typically, how long do they own it before it comes to you? Uh, and second, do they does it go through your system more than once? Is it one time, or can can it go through it two or three times? You know, sometimes it will go through our system multiple times. So someone will. We are a marketplace, both buying and consigning. Um, something like a Derek Lamb dress, they may wear a season. Maybe they'll wear it four years and um, then they'll consign the item with us. What we see is happening is people are interested in what the resale value is for Derek Lamb or for Chanel or Louis Vuitton and they're calling us now to understand what that resale value is. So they're, they're designing between two handbags, um, they may say this handbag like a Chanel has a better resale value. So I'm gonna go ahead and purchase that in the primary market and then when I'm done with it, I'm gonna consign it with you. Um, our business is across all pla uh, many categories, women's and men's fashion, fine jewelry and watches, um, art and home, as well as kids. Yeah, Henry, talk about the interplay between online sales and the retail stores and how you see that evolving for your brand going forward and how you kind of think about the omni-channel access to, to your brand and to the product. Yeah, that's yes. the big question right yeah. now. It's a huge shift. Um, I don't think you can replace the retail experience in any means, but in the same time, women are so used nowadays to get everything right away. They shop online, they hail their cab online, so this, we need to replicate the same ease. And so what we're trying to do is to combine both, the website with the store. So we offer an amazing service where we come to you, to your office. You can choose online. You call us, the store. and we, I mean, we do it in New York and in, you know, where we have our store, but we're trying to, to do that in other places too, where we, we deliver full service. If we know your size. You don't have to deal with paying. You don't have to deal with alterations. And, and so we're trying to combine the ease of online to to the quality and service of retail. The other opportunity with online for us is international expansion. We can go now to China, which yes. we couldn't do 10 years ago because you had to be have relationship with malls and with brick and mortar. Now we have like an opportunity of telling the Derek Lamb brand story on, on apps which go through, you know, many, many more people than ever before. So Roddy, this online phenomenon is very helpful to Derek Lam. Is it essential to your business? I mean, we've had consignment shops for some time, but what, could you be doing what you're doing without online? So we started as a digitally native company. That's who we are. We're a technology company. Um, and you know, we started to uh, test some brick and mortar concept. We opened a pop-up in New York and Soho um, a couple of, it was I think the holiday before last, did really well for us. Um, we decided to open a permanent store in Soho that we opened last holiday. And what we see is happening there, it's really about accelerating our growth. So we're seeing on average both customers and consigners um, being more loyal to us us as a brand and spending more or consigning more throughout the year. Um, so that, that's, that's the main piece for us and why it's important. It adds brand credibility. People get to see what a pre-owned item looks like um, at the real real as far as condition goes as well. Yeah, and Hendrik, I want to wrap up because we often talk on this show about the Amazon effect and the impact that that's having on the retail environment. You're happy to see your items being sold on somewhere like the, the Real Real. What about being sold as part of an Amazon marketplace? Do you worry that that dilutes the brand or is there an inevitability about that in terms of the retail sector that you just have to accept and, and kind of go with? I think um, it's all about ease again, you know, and I think Amazon, it's so easy to buy. I, I don't think people are so, I think they do a distinction between the brand and where it lives. Obviously, you need the store, you need the retail environment to sell the whole, to, to tell the whole story. But I think you, it's, you know, women nowadays, they look, they know the quality of the product. So they, you know, if they can get it on Amazon, so be it. You can't fight it. 